Hallelujah. This morning, Brother Copeland ministered on healing and forgiveness. And towards the end, he was able to lay hands on some of you. But he also spoke the healing word that you could just raise your hands and with your faith receive. So those of you who say that you received that healing anointing this morning in your body and you can already tell a difference, raise your hand if you would real quickly. Come up here just real quickly. We, we, want, to, we want to hear from a few of you. I don't know if we'll get to all of you, but we want to hear from those of you who say you can already tell a difference. Come up. Move real quickly up here. Move real quickly, real quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What about you, love? What what condition were you dealing with? I was dealing with the um, the toes, the uh, spasms in the toes. And I wasn't going to come up at first, but then when you said at night, and that's when it would always happen. It would start in my toes, and then I would get these leg cramps. And I didn't mention it to any of my kids or anything. And so, because I didn't want to give the enemy any give it rise you know I wasn't going to talk about it so I just get up and pray and walk around the room but I got healed this morning <laughs> me I know it was from other people but it was for me how, how long had you been dealing with that um probably about a year yeah. I just hadn't said anything hallelujah so my kids were surprised they were like what you mean you know you were dealing with that but I was and so you know God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all just come on up and line up if you say that. Hey, hallelujah. How about you, Miss Betty? How long have you been dealing with that? The same, the same as her. For about a year, and it's at night. I would just get up, and my toes would just like that. It would wake me up in my yeah. sleep. And yeah. so. And you were dancing around this morning. So oh, yes. Amen. <laughs> and I had other symptoms, and th those are gone. You had other symptoms? Yes. Whatever. Yes. Um, right in here been dealing with some things and I've been standing and standing and yeah. praise God they are gone in Jesus name. Praise so. the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you Miss Betty. <laughs> God bless you. What about you Agrista? That's the uh, the small of my back was really fatigued and I could feel the tightness in it um, and it went away as soon as he said to receive it but he was also talking about that part in your tongue and earlier this week it had been bothering me and I didn't think about it until he said it that I realized that's not supposed to be on me. Yeah. And so the moment he said it, I received it and God healed it. Praise the Lord. How, how long with the back? How long had you been having situation there? You know, it tries to reoccur when I get tired, when I'm on heels. But how long has, uh, over a period of time, how long have you been dealing with it? Over a year. Over a year. Over. Hallelujah. Gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come here, love. What about you? Um, he had spoken over hips, knees, and ankles, yes. and in this past like month, I've been having extreme pain and all of that to where I'm on my feet all day, and it was becoming very painful, and as soon as he said that, I started giving action to it and moving my hips and bending my knees, and all that pain's gone. I've been feeling it constantly. So when you were in the service this morning, you were having that pain? Yeah. yeah. And that pain, and as soon as he said that, I started moving my hips, and you know, getting my dance on, and it's gone. It's gone. So. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, love. Good evening. What about you? Pastor Durant's from East Village Community Church in San Diego. He called everything except the lower back, and I've been having extreme problems with sharp jutting pains right up under my rear shoulder blade. So I took a claiming when he talked about toes, I just claimed it for my back. <clears throat> I was having pains this morning. I had to lean over while I was in my seat. Yes. I claim the victory. I claim the faith. I claim the healing. And right now, there is no pain in my back. So this evening's service is amazing. And how long have you been dealing with that pain in your back? For about six months. Six months. Six months. No more. It's, it's gone tonight. And it's gone for good. <laughs> because I stand on the word of faith. Amen. My pleasure. Amen. God bless you. Pastor Ruslan, all the way from Siberia. Abakan, Siberia, and then Nadia, his interpreter. So what about what is Three months ago, I... One brother, he bought a piece of land for his church. And he was showing me, and there was a lake near that place. And I wanted to look at it. So I climbed a tree. <laughs> and that was a tall tree. And as I was looking around, and then I started to climb down, and then that branch broke. 
I grabbed with my hands and it broke too. So I fell on my back from that height. I even lost my consciousness at that moment. And there are some people here, they are from Moscow. They took me to uh, investigation. On and the doctor saw uh, like my uh, great problem with my neck. I felt that discomfort all the time. And when Brother Copeland was praying, he said uh, somebody's uh, like neck in the back is getting healed. And I was even forgetting about it. But suddenly I felt like a fire on my neck. Uh, and uh, when I went back to the hotel, I fell asleep. And I had difficulty with that before. And I feel so good. <laughs> Praise the Lord, Pastor Ruslan. Hallelujah. Come on up here, love. What is it with, that you were dealing with? So a couple days ago, I was diagnosed with critically low um, iron and hemoglobin, where they told me that I would have to have a blood transfusion if it was even a, a point lower. So um, last night, when he kept talking about the woman with the issue of blood, I mean, kind of a different situation. But um, so I have not felt good for a year, and I didn't know what was going on, but I just kept just dealing with it. So when they told me that, me being a nurse, I knew that something was very wrong. Um, and so I even came in here, because we drive up several hours to come here, because I go to Pastor Trevor's church. Um, I was here in the back, and I was so sick in the back, I almost felt bad, because I was, I looked like I was falling asleep, but I wasn't. I just, because it makes you exhausted, but I was just listening. And um, today was the first day I woke up feeling good. I could actually say, I feel good today. <laughs> Anyone says, because my response was always, I'm tired, I don't feel good. And it was a true feeling, you know? So I can actually say, I feel good today. <laughs> so it, it, that, that's amazing to answer that. Yes, ma'am, praise the Lord. It matters where you, that you be in the right place to hear the right thing. Amen, God bless you. What about you, love? Come on up here, y'all. Hi, this morning I was actually praying for my friend Karen and um, I have an old uh, knee injury and I wasn't thinking anything about that. How long, how long is old? Oh, 30 some odd years. Oh, that's pretty old. Yeah, and it wasn't bothering me this morning, but every time I do squats it kind of catches and everything. So I was at home this afternoon and I did some squats and no problem. Ah. The healing anointing is here. So <laughs> whether you're thinking about it or not, I claim it. Hallelujah. I'm healed and whole in the name of Jesus. Just being in the atmosphere yes. of the anointing. So, Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come up here, love. What is it you were dealing with? Well, I've had a lot of trouble with my Achilles for quite a while, probably about seven years. And uh, it got really bad. And actually on the flight over here, I had to wear a surgical boot. Anyway, just went in the meeting and I was just saying, I receive it, I receive it and that. And praise the Lord, I got healed. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. That flight was worth it, sister. Look at her running. There she goes. <laughs> well, I came from a hospital bed to come to the healing service this morning. I was in a hospital bed for four to five days with... Um, uh, obstruction of my intestines and all the time in the hospital bed I was listening to Gloria Copeland on a service she gave years ago on um, supernatural medical healing and um, just played it over and over and over again in my hospital bed and the person my neighbor started listening the and one in your hotel in your in, hospital in the hospital yeah, yeah. so she as with all the strength she could, she came up and she was, is that Kenneth Copeland, Gloria Copeland? I go, it is. And she's like, can you put it up louder? <laughs> and <laughs> and um, long story short, when I was getting ready to get uh, released, she told me, are you trying to get released to go to the meetings that are going to happen? I said, yes. She goes, I heard you tell the doctor, do whatever you can, but I have to get out of here. And it turns out that she comes to this church once in a while as well, because she knew exactly the church and everything. And I was supposed to be in bed for a while, week, 
couldn't stand up on my own two feet, nothing. I came, my daughter and my husband helped me get ready. I made it to church this morning. I'm good. I'm not weak. I'm not, no pain, nothing. I tried, they told me I couldn't eat for a while. I tried eating after service. I had some chicken soup and some jello. No pain, no cramps. I feel good. I feel well. I'm healed. Immediate healing. Praise so. the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Come up here, love. What was it you were dealing with, love? Well, I w wasn't able to come this morning, but I knew I had to hear it. So I got on Facebook and, and heard y'all and Mr. Copeland when he was talking about the back yes. and the pain down the legs. I've dealt with that for decades. And um, it's painful every day for me to do anything. And I've had a little less pain now. Yeah. And so you can tell the difference. Yeah, and I've also dealt with cramping in my feet ever since I've been a teenager, every day, night and day. And there's a little less pain in my toes. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's working. It's working. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The power of the Lord is present. I said the power of the Lord is present. What to do a work. Hallelujah. You can receive it, can't you? Brother Copeland, answers have come. Help has come in these meetings. And um, he has given us prescriptions, diagnosis out of the word to help us go further in 2019. How many of you say, I'm going to leave these meetings different? Hallelujah. Brother Copeland, thank you so much for coming. Give him a great big God bless you as he comes. Praise God. Yes, I do. Come on, shout amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. I'll tell you, testimonies are exciting. They're not only exciting, they're very important. You need to tell it. And, and you need to tell it right away. And you need to tell it again and again and again. And every time the devil starts trying to put the symptoms back on you, say, no, you can't do that. And call somebody and tell them your testimony. Call them, tell them about you, receive your healing. Praise God. The woman with the issue of blood, Jesus had her tell it. Amen. He had her tell it. It's very important. And it's a good thing because you help people. Testimonies increase our capacity for faith. Hearing a good testimony. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. But when we hear someone's testimony, whoa, it inspires you, man. I'm telling you, your capacity for faith just, just really enlarges. And it's, it's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Well, Brother Copeland, you didn't say anything about hearts this morning, and I was wanting to hear about hearts. Well, I'm not done yet. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Tonight is your night. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He walked the street to Calvary, the rugged cross he bore. The crowd stood by and watched this man. They'd heard him preach before. No one could ever be worthy of such love. I'd never find when he was on the cross I was on his mind the look of love was on his face thorns on his head the blood that stained his scarlet robe Stained it crimson red His eyes were on that crowd that day 
yet he looked ahead in time when he was on the cross I was on his mind he knew Sing it with me now. He walked the street to Calvary, the rugged cross he bore. The crowd stood by and they watched this man. They'd heard him preach before. Could ever be worthy of such love? I never find when he was on the cross. I was on his mind. Sing it with me now. He. You know, I'm just messing with you, don't I? <laughs> yet. Not yet. <laughs> Come on, try it now. Yet. One more time. Yet. Oh, you got it now. Okay, one more time. He knew me. Yet. We can take this thing on the road, but <laughs> yet he loved me. He whose glory makes 
the heavens shine. No one's worthy. Same thing now. Of such mercy. was on the cross he had me on his mind big finish now when he was on the cross I I'm going to tell you something. If you can't sing and preach in this church, forget it, Jack. You can't sing. You can't preach. Just quit. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. I enjoy this place. Thank you, Nancy, for giving me the opportunity, the honor, and the pleasure of preaching in your house. It's wonderful. How many of you remember Minnie Pearl? I'm just so glad to be here. <laughs> oh, and give these musicians a, a hand. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, God. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we come before the Word tonight <laughs> with expectant hearts. Oh, yes. Open hearts and open minds to receive from heaven revelation into the life of faith the life of hope and the, and the life of love and the victorious Christian life. And we praise you for it. And we thank you tonight for about those, about and for those things that are about to, to occur here that you've already had planned. <laughs> you already knew about it all the time. And we step into that place. We step into our place that you prepared for us tonight. And we would see this Jesus. And we give you praise and honor. And we thank you with all of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. I'll tell you what, I enjoy what I do. Whew. You know, I just preach by myself sometimes. <laughs> now, I've never gone as far as Jesse. Jesse receives an offering from himself. <laughs> I've never done that yet. <laughs> Maybe I need to come up a notch. I don't know. <laughs> oh, but uh, mm -hmm. that Jesse, glory to God. He said, <laughs> the first airplane that the Lord uh, put into Jesse's ministry was a, an airplane that could be flown single pilot. It was a jet, but it was a smaller airplane. And uh, we had one like it, and I, I flew it single pilot all over the country. And, 
And so Jesse's pilot, uh, Jesse would sit up in the right seat, in the co-pilot seat, with him. And Jack taught him how to use the radios and how to, you know, and, and do all that. And oh, he's excited about that. And uh, he said, he said, Kenneth, I tell you, it's wonderful. He said, I can almost land that airplane. I said, Jesse, almost landing is a crash. <laughs> help it. <laughs> well, I could have. I didn't even try to help it. <laughs> oh, I tell you, running around with Jesse is an experience. I, it, it <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Open your Bibles with me tonight, first of all, to Joshua. The first chapter. Now we're going to be talking tonight about developing training and educating the born again human spirit. And you know, we believe in education. I believe in in educating the mind. I believe in training the, the human body. And, but it's not body, mind, and spirit. It's not, it's not mind, body, and spirit. It is spirit, soul, and body. The soul and the spirit are not the same. The soul is made up of the intellect, the, the, the mind, the will, and the emotions. A three-part integrated system. Everything God ever created Every living thing requires nourishment. That's right. Everything. Yes. Every little bug, yes, yes. every plant requires nourishment. That's right. Now, the physical body requires physical food. Now remember now, Jesus said, whatever is born of the flesh is flesh. Whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. So they, they don't cross. They can work together, but one doesn't replace the other. So the physical body requires physical food. So what happens and why? Why do you require physical food in order to have physical strength? Isn't that right? Well, the intellect requires intellectual food. Is Especially when you think about the strength produced by a healthy mind is willpower. Yeah. And you can't you can't have you can have just so little willpower if all you ever mentally feed on is mental candy. All you do is just watch movies and, Come on. and don't, ever, don't, don't ever challenge your mind on, and, and so forth, yeah. particularly with the Word of God. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Of course, the Word and the renewal of the mind is 
uh, mental food. Now, the spirit, the you, you are a spirit. Inside your spirit, you have a soul. Now, let me give you, let me touch on something here. You remember Lazarus that lay at the rich man's gate, died, and went into the bosom of Abraham. The rich man died and went into hell. Listen carefully. Abraham said, Son, remember. His memory wasn't in his brain. Yes, sir. I mean, his brain's upstairs someplace with his body. Amen. He was more aware, not less aware. He recognized Abraham. Had he ever met Abraham? Absolutely not. He certainly didn't worship God. He knew who he was. And he was very emotional. His emotions were intact. Now, we have a phrase talking about a person going to hell. And Jesus referred to it of losing your soul. Well, now, it didn't go away. But when you go into hell, you lose command of it. You're in constant, total fear all the time. All the time. It's referred to as a bottomless pit. So there's a sensation of falling all the time. And you never hit the bottom. You just fall and fall and fall. It's an eternal bad dream. Amen. Amen. So my strong advice is stay away from there. <laughs> stay out of there. Amen. I, I wanted uh, to share that with you and, and give you some clarity uh, about the spirit and the soul. Now we know what happens to the body. Uh, that's fairly plain. Now, what about the spirit man? Jesus said, man does not live, you remember Matthew 4, 4, man does not live by bread alone. But now listen, but by how many words? Every word. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Smith Wigglesworth, one of the most powerful men of faith, would <laughs> uh, I, I knew a man, I, I met him and, and had conversation with him in, in Tulsa, Dr. Duncan, Charles Duncan over at Trent. And when he was a young preacher, uh, in the UK, Wigglesworth preached in his church. He said, man, he's scary. <laughs> but he said when, when he would uh, sit down to have a meal and he'd finish eating, he'd, he'd pull out his testament. He'd say, okay, we fed our flesh, now let's feed our spirit. And he would read a chapter or two from his New Testament. Praise God. Now see, he's, he's constantly aware that he needs to be fed all the time. All the time. Ever increasing faith. That was one of his phrases. That your faith should be ever increasing. Amen. Now, <clears throat> So the spirit feeds on spirit food. 
and produces a spiritual force called faith. Yeah. Now when you see it like that, it just all of a sudden becomes so clear. I want to go back to that every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I was, <clears throat> we're going to be talking about uh, meditation in the Word, and I, I was meditating that one day, and, and, and I had, um, I had over the years a con considerable number of times, an amount of time meditating on that. Oh, but this day, I don't know, it just, whoa. It just stepped off into a, 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 a little different place. And all of a sudden there then, the word of the Lord came to me. <clears throat> and he said, Kenneth, a born again human being has the spiritual capacity to hear and understand my words. He said, you're born in my class. We're born again, not of incorruptible seed, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. Amen. That gives us the exact spiritual DNA of Jesus. Amen. Yes, sir. We're not a little like Him. No, sir. We are just like just Him. Like him. I'm talking about your spirit. Yes, sir. Amen. So and that's the reason that the, the, the spirit man needs to be developed, yes, sir. Yes. needs to be educated. Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. Amen. And he said, uh, now Kenneth, <laughs> you know, God can say something that you've known all of your life yeah. and all of a sudden it's just really something. Yeah. He said, Kenneth, I am God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and he said, I could begin speaking to you and speak to you for the rest of eternity and never say the same word twice. Whoa, he's God. And it just went all for me. He didn't say he would, he said he could. He's eternal. He's been, he's been talking a long time. But here's what just really, oh, he said, if I can say it, you can hear it. Oh, I just, it, I don't know, it's just, just a flash of inspiration there when you begin to see not just what we've got born out of, but what we've been born into. Somebody, somebody say amen. amen. Glory to God. Now that, that, that really woke me up on the inside and gave me a, a great appreciation for spending more time in His Word and more time listening than talking. Did you ever stop and think that all the praying you did and all the talking you did about the problem and all the people involved in the problem that you never informed him of anything? Wow. <laughs> he, already knew, he already knew the whole thing. But there are, even though he knows it, there are things that you must say and there are things that, that is good for you to inform him. Good for you to ask. Ask and you shall receive. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I said those things by the Spirit of God to uh, put us on the same page together about the development, the training, and education of the born again human spirit. So now, the step number one, there's five steps here. That And I'll go ahead and give them all to you because we, we may not have time to cover them all. The first one is meditation in the Word. 
The second one is being a doer of the word, not just a hearer only. The third one is to put the word first place and final authority. Put the, the Bible, God's word, final authority in your life. Whatever it says is right. Amen. And it was right the first time. Now then, the fourth one, then obey the voice of your spirit, that still small voice spoken of in 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. And God, now listen to me now. He is speaking all the time. Ever since Jesus went to the cross, went to hell and paid the price, raised from the dead and glorified at the right hand of the Father and the Holy Spirit and His angels, Jacob's ladder is no longer in place. They're not going back and forth. When Satan took command, the angels were here on mission. But we know from Hebrews 1.14, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth? They got run out. But I want you to know when Jesus got through with the devil in hell, I mean, oh dear Lord, no man has ever suffered that and never will again because he suffered it all. Yes. Amen. Yes. Oh, but he was manifest in the flesh in Bethlehem, but he was made alive in the spirit in hell itself when he was the first man to be born again from sin to righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, he never committed sin. He was made to be sin. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And he's no longer the only begotten Son of God. He is now the firstborn from the dead. That, that's enough right there to make you run around the room, sister. <laughs> he's the firstborn. Firstborn. And we're joint heirs. All of us have firstborn status. Every born again child of God has firstborn rights, yes, blood rights. Yes, Amen. 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 Because our twin. Uh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And of course, he was born first. Yes, sir. Yes. So he has the preeminence. Amen. I don't know. I, it doesn't take me long to get happy on this stuff now. I'm telling you what. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, <clears throat> Then the fifth one is do what God says, do it exactly as he said, and do it now. Yeah. So let's go up to number one and go to the book of Joshua, chapter one. <clears throat> and <clears throat> verse two, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore... Arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, <clears throat> let's go down to the eighth verse. This book of the law, or we would say, my covenant word, yes. shall not depart out of your mouth. Don't be saying anything but this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But you shall meditate. Now that Hebrew word means to mutter. It means to talk to yourself. Like one fellow said, every once in a while you need to talk to somebody who's got good sense. <laughs> talk to yourself. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> 
meditate day and night. Now, how do you do that? Well, you just keep it on your mind all the time. Now, it's easier for people in full-time ministry. How many of you in full-time ministry? Amen. Now, it, it's easier for us in a way. On the other hand, we can get so busy that we don't have time. I mean, you can get so busy working for God, you ain't got time for God. That'll get you killed. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you work in the secular world, it depends on how you start an injured day. Don't ever, 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 ever shut your eyes at night afraid. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. You just go through the scripture and find out how many times it says fear not. When he says fear not, he means it. When Jairus was right in the middle of that crowd, pushed right up next to Jesus, and the death messenger came. How did Jesus deal with that? What's the first thing he said? He said, well, in the King James, he said, fear not. He literally said, stop the fear. I don't think he was all that nice about it. Very important. Did you notice Jairus never said a word? After he spoke his faith down there at the lake shore, he never said another word until his baby was alive again. Praise God. But Jesus just turned and said, stop the fear. Believe only. She will be made whole. Amen. Amen. Yes. Now listen, you can adopt that for yourself. That's right. Yes, sir. Stop the fear. That's right. Believe only, and you will be made whole. That's right. Stop the fear about that money situation. On. Believe only, on. and you will prosper. Yes. Yes. But you can't keep messing with that fear. That's right. That's right. Because fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Right. Amen. 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 All right. <clears throat> now notice something else here. Meditate therein day and night that you may observe, that you may see into, that you may have <clears throat> insight to do. Yeah. It'll start talking to you. You start meditating it and it'll start talking to you. Amen. Amen. And you will observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, yeah. then, yeah. then, when is the then? After insight, concept, and ideas come, Hallelujah. birthed by the Spirit of God yeah. in your spirit. Hallelujah. And in meditation, it'll get over to your mind. Amen. Amen. And you begin to see things other people don't see. Right. I had the Lord say to me just a few weeks ago, well, a couple of months ago, ah, he said, climb Mount Nebo. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. And look at the promised land. And see things other people don't see. Know things other people don't know. Wow. Hear things other people don't hear. Glory to God. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. 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 So on. get your climbing shoes on. Come on. Amen. Yes, sir. What is that? Your meditation shoes. Yes. Climb Mount Nebo. Get up there in the spirit where you can see across yes. the valley. Glory. Yes. Glory Amen. to God. Does that bless you like it yes. blesses me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Whoa. Oh, Hallelujah. Well, for then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. The cross reference says, then you will deal wisely. One translation says, you will deal wisely in the affairs of life. Now, 
Look in, <clears throat> excuse me, in this second chapter, and I want to open your eyes to something here. This is when Joshua sent two spies. He knew better than to send that whole raft of them. I mean, he done he been through that. He got him two faith guys and sent them. He made that choice before he ever sent anybody out there. All right. Now, we know that Rahab, and did you ever notice that the, the Bible is very careful to call her Rahab the harlot? Now, you need to be a little careful here because she's Jesus. Uh, great, great grandmother. So don't be pushing the harlot stuff too hard here. <laughs> God can handle the harlot part. It's religious people he can't handle. Amen. Now, I want you to notice this. Had they when they crossed that Red Sea, they praised God, and that was the last time they praised Him for 40 years. Now, I want to show you something. When God, when the Spirit of God begins to lead you, He doesn't give you all the details. He gives you an opportunity to make a faith decision. Because if you did, you wouldn't be walking by faith, you'd be walking by sight. Now, I want you to, this, this just, oh, it, it's thrilling. And on the, on the other hand, it is heartbreaking when you see this. Now, here's what Rahab said to those men <clears throat> in the second chapter. In verse 9, she said unto the men, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> can I have some water, please? Thank you, David. She said, I know that the Lord hath given you the land. Now, wait a minute, Rahab. How do you know this? And that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did under the two kings of the Amorites. Now look at that 11th verse. As soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt, yeah. neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you, because the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. They could have walked across there and never fired a shot. They would have done. You remember that scene in, 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 in the Gulf War? I mean, those Iraqi troops were, I mean, they were surrendering to helicopters. They wanted out of this thing. They didn't want to be there in the first place. They were outgunned, outclassed, and they knew it, and they wanted it out of this mess. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The terror of the American soldier yes, sir. was inside those Iraqi troops. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They didn't want any more of it. Right. If God tells you to cross the Red Sea, Come on. he's already dealt with the giants on the Hallelujah. other side. Hallelujah. But you're not going to get that unless you take time to meditate his word and, and think about it and pray about it and, 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 just, and seek his, his will and insight because I'm going. Amen. And praise God, I'm going across there. Amen. I'm going across. I'm going to do this thing. 
Yeah, there's going to be opposition. But hey, my God is the giant here. Whew, I, just can't, I just can't say that enough. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to Jesus. I wanted you to see that. Now, they spent 40 years giving that other side. They gave the, that whole the time for most of that generation over there that was just scared spitless that they were coming. Gave them time to get over it. A lot of them die out. And now they had to fight when they could have just walked in there. And it wasn't but an 11 day walk. Meditating the Word. Meditating the Word. And God dropped something in your heart that's just completely, totally impossible. Don't frown. Laugh. Because something big about to happen on the other side. <laughs> and the longer you gripe, and the longer you hold back, and the longer you talk about how bad it is, you give the, you give the devil an opportunity to reinforce him, himself. Because he don't know what's coming unless it comes out of your mouth. All he knows about you is what he put in you. Once you got born again, you, he has no insight into you anymore. No. But you just talk all the time, then he does. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Now, you know what? That's worth coming to church tonight, just, just to get that. But these this things this thing come from meditating the Word. And insight into it. Now it's amazing to me. I mean, it is big time amazing to me. How many born again, Holy Ghost baptized, tongue talking, healing, believing Christians don't know that right there, and have never ever read that? Well, you know it now. And of course, there's a lot of you already knew it, but. We need to reinforce these things yes. in our thinking. Yes. I told you all already about meditating Mark 11, 24. I've spent a lot of time in that over the years, preaching it and studying it and living by it and uh, meditating these different scriptures. And then <laughs> just this, this not very long ago, it just went up another notch went up to another place and got so real. It was just like Jesus was just sitting there right next to me about the desires. He's given us a way to have all of our desires met. But you can't do it without the 23rd verse. And you can't do that without the 22nd verse. And you can't have the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th verse without the 25th verse. Amen. 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 But you put those verses together and put them first in your life and begin to believe them and don't let the devil talk you out of it. Amen. Particularly when you get tired and you're worn, people give up and shouldn't. Jesus said men ought to always pray and not faint, not give up, not cave in. Well, prayer is not just gimme, gimme. Right. Prayer is believing you receive when you pray. Amen. Well, Mark 11, 23 is a part of prayer in Mark 11, 24. So it's of vital importance to just take time and just think about it and think about it and think about it and talk to yourself about it. Well, let's see now. Um, yeah. Yeah. What's the first thing I'm going to do? What's the first thing that I'm going to do after the first million and I, and I pay off all these debts? Oh, Brother Copeland, you're dreaming. You're right. Yeah. That's what hope is. Yeah. It's a Bible-based dream, brother. 
Glory to God. You got time me to tell you a little story? Good, because I was going to do it anyway. But I am. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, Gloria began saving magazines with houses in them. Southern Living, Architectural Digest, and of course I had my airplane magazine, she had her house magazine. <laughs> yeah. And she kept saving these things and got so many of them you couldn't hardly carry them around. I said, sweetheart, why don't you just cut the pictures out that you, well, I can file them and just work with that. That's a good idea, she said. So she started doing that. And then um, we'd come home from meetings, come off the road. Boy, she'd head straight to the dining room and get on the dining room table. And then she bought her some graph paper, some large tablet of graph paper with the little squares in it. And she's playing house. And she'd cut out these room pictures and she'd arrange them and put them on there. And uh, she's building her house. Well, she did that for a little over 30 years. She came one day and she said, Kenneth, this house just keeps getting bigger <laughs> and bigger and bigger. She said, I can't figure out any way to cut it back. I said, well, what do you want to cut it back for, baby? It's a dream. Dream on, girl. Glory to God. Just dream on. Well, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't standing in the prophet's office when I said that. I was just telling her, just dream on, girl. She said, yeah, that's good. Now, men, don't be stupid and try to hold your wife back all the time. Amen. Amen. Because when she prospers, you prosper. Amen. So, <laughs> she just did, kept on. And like I said, she did that for a little over 30 years, about 31 years. She came in there to me one day and she said, Kenneth, Something's happening on this house. She said, I'm either going to have to, we're going to have to build it or, or just quit this. And she said, uh, I want to know, I want us to pray and see if it is God's will for us to build this house. She, she, wasn't, she wasn't doing all that for, to build a house. She was just having fun. She enjoyed it. Then it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So I said, good. So uh, any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who give a liberty to all men and upbraideth not, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. And so we just set aside three days, and, and we didn't pray about anything else for that three days except the wisdom of God's concern this out. <laughs> and... Uh, we were sitting on the couch and oh, the word of the Lord came to me so clearly. He said, I want you to lay hands on Gloria and minister this house to her. For it is part of your prosperity. And read this scripture. And it was from Isaiah 54, the first few verses there. Build the house, lengthen the, strengthen the stakes, lengthen the cords, and so forth and so on. <clears throat> and you'll not be disappointed. You know the verse. So I just turned around there to her, and I just repeated what I'd heard the Lord say. And I laid my hands on her, and I had my Bible, and I started reading those verses. And she just burst out weeping. And I, what? <laughs> you know, I, I didn't understand what it was. Oh, Kenna, she said, oh, glory to God. She said, you remember the little book of Brother Roberts? Don't let anyone steal your dreams. I said, yeah. She said, Kenneth, I wrote down my dreams on a piece of paper 
Later, we found that paper again. It's supernatural the way we found it. She said, right up at the top of the list was the perfect home for this family and this ministry. And that was the verse of Scripture that I put on my list. She said, that was my first Scripture. Then she had furniture scriptures, and then she had all these other, but that was the first one. Oh, and she just began to laugh, and she began to cry at the same time. Now, I told you that story because I wanted you to hear this. The Lord said to me later, that dream, now see, this is a godly dream. It was her desire. He said that dream began to take upon itself faith. And it had to be born. Now what most people do is don't ever bother to take the time to develop it in the first place. And you struggle with it. And then you, you, you don't know quite how to build it. And then when you do, I mean, you, you and the, the, the architect have a falling out and, and everything. And everybody gets mad at everybody else. And you can't get a loan on the thing. <laughs> Let me tell you what happens when you just follow through with that kind of dream. And, of course, we followed the Word of God. We built God's house first. Yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. Well, um, <laughs> of course it took time to um, develop the, the plans. Now a good friend of ours um, in fact uh, his brother-in-law is on our board of directors. And so, but he's a commercial builder, but he had a residential architect that worked for him. And so he came to help Gloria with her house plans. And he saw that graph paper. And he saw all of that. He said, my goodness, you've already done all the work. He said, all I need to do is just transfer this over he said, this is the easiest job I've ever had in my life. <laughs> and there was, there, there was almost zero things that had to be fixed in that house because she, all, she really knew what that place looked like. And she was able to get it across to the builder. God led us to a born-again contractor. And I mean, and his son, who's now taken over the business, came over to the house just a few, oh, it was a couple of months ago, and we just had a big time together. We hadn't seen him in a long time. That's the way it ought to be between you and your contractor. Everybody happy with everybody there. Now, listen to me. I never said anything to anybody about it. Never meant, I've never written an appeal letter. In the 52 years I've been in this ministry. Now, I'm not, I'm not judging somebody else. Now, you understand? The Lord wouldn't allow me to do it because of some things that had to do with the reason that, I'm, that I do what I do. Anyway, we just said, Lord, here it is. Of course, we sowed seed and had been so in a long time, paying off other people's houses and and, and helping people in their houses and things like that. And we weren't really thinking about that according to our house. We were just obeying God as it came up. It took a, about two years before we laid the foundation. The day we laid the foundation on that house, the money was in the bank to build it. Now I had partners that say, Brother Copeland, 
I, I've added a little extra money for Gloria's house. I don't know what she's doing, but whatever it is, it's, there's another hundred here for her house. We haven't mentioned it to anybody. <laughs> but see, when you're a sower and when you're a tither, and you put God's word in his business first, and then you take time to dream, what is happening? Hope was building. Hope was building. And it finally got up to the place where it had to come to pass. Amen. That's important. Don't just jump out into things just because you want to. I, hey, listen to me. I understand. Cause, hey, <laughs> you have no idea how many times I've fouled this deal up. Now, I'll tell you about the good stuff. I ain't got time to stand up here and tell you all the time I've... <laughs> I goofed it up, messed it up. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I jumped. Oh, I jumped to Tracy's way back there and I bought an old, I actually didn't buy it. I leased it. I didn't have money enough to buy it. Uh, pretty fairly worn out airplane. <laughs> I didn't have any business with that and I knew it, but I, did, I wanted it. Well, I hadn't been flying it but a little while, and the prop governor went all, went south on the thing, and I didn't have money enough to get it fixed, and, and I went in there to pray over it, and I said, Lord, now you know this is your airplane. Boy, he piped up. He said, don't put that piece of junk off on me. I didn't have nothing to do with it. <laughs> now, he said, he said you, just, you just buck up, and you take it back over there to that man, and you tell him you haven't got the money to pay for it. Oh. I'll get you the money to fix that prop governor. And so he doesn't have to fix your mess. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I didn't want to tell that man that. <laughs> but he said, I'll take care of him. Mm. So I went over there. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> and just bit the bullet. I said, sir, I disobeyed God. I don't have money. I can't afford this airplane. The prop governor went out on it. But I said, I've had it fixed. And, uh, and anything else that's, that, that's wrong with it, I get the money, I'll, I'll fix it. I'm responsible for it. But I'm asking you to let me out of that lease because I don't have money to do it. He said, well, one thing about it, Copeland, you're honest, ain't you? I said, yeah. I didn't want to do this. <laughs> I didn't want to tell you that. He kind of laughed. He said, I appreciate it. I'm glad that you did. He said, I'll forget it. He said, whatever else wrong with it, I'll take care of it. Praise See, God gave me favor. God gave me favor. But you just got to suck it up sometimes. And get brutally honest with, don't condemn yourself, but just get honest, get honest with God and honest with people. Amen. Amen. Now, these things come when you take the time to meditate and think about it and see yourself with it and see yourself receiving it and see yourself, praise God. Now, now what, what, what do I do now? That, that I'm healed and completely well. What do I do now that I can get up out of this wheelchair? Maybe I hadn't walked a step. There was a woman that hadn't walked for four years. And Brother Hagin had ministered under the anointing and he was tired and the anointing had lifted from him. And, but these, these people couldn't, they had come from quite a distance that brought her over there and they, they couldn't come back. So he said, well, and he just, she was in a wheelchair, and, and so he just sat down on the platform right next to her and had her read Isaiah 53, like we did this morning, and Matthew 8, 17, and 1 Peter 2, 24. Then he had her read all three of them again. Then he had her read all three of them again. <clears throat> he said, now, is that future tense, present tense, or past tense. She said, why, why, 
Why? 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 It's past tense. He said, that's right. That's what I wanted you to see. Yeah. Why, yes. Yes, she said. Now, the doctor said she'd never walk again. Mm. Been in that chair for four years. And, and Brother Hagin said, you should have seen that little woman's face light up. And she, she began to just cry. She said, oh, God, oh, I'm so glad to be healed. I got so tired sitting in that old chair. I got so tired that I couldn't do my work, couldn't fix a meal. Oh, and you know how tired I got sitting in that thing. It is so wonderful to be healed. Brother Hagin said, well, you believe you're healed. And she said, I certainly do. He said, well, rise and walk. She just got up and walked out right straight up out of that chair. Now, can you see it? Now, as people that are word taught, what we need to do is take the time to meditate like that. See yourself with it. Talk with it. In the name of Jesus. Yes, if, it's a, if it's a new home you need, don't just take anything that comes down the road. Yes, sir. Right. Spend some time meditating on yes, it. Hallelujah. Don't talk yourself out of something good. Hallelujah. Or think yourself out of it. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I might not be able to afford that, but just forget it. Just forget it. Just stay in that old rent house until you get over that can't afford business. And meditate those scriptures. Come on, sir. Amen. Meditate them. See yourself. Amen. And let it develop. Amen. And let it develop. Amen. And let it develop. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now what's happening? Your spirit man is being trained, strengthened, and educated. Once, once you grasp these truths, Nobody can ever take them away from you. Hope comes. Then faith comes. And then love brings it to pass. Hallelujah. Now, number two, be a doer of the word. James chapter one, please. First chapter of James. <clears throat> Verse 22, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own self. Deceiving whom? Your own self. Your own self. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, He's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholds himself and goes his way and straightway forgets what manner of man he was or forgets what he saw. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. Oh, don't you like that? I mean, man, that'll sing a song to you. You'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Amen. Amen. It is the perfect law. It works every time it's put to work. Amen. Now, what does he mean, and why? Somebody looks in the mirror. How many of you looked in the mirror today? <laughs> the rest of you didn't? <laughs> Everybody in this room. Yeah. At one time or another. You didn't tie that tie in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> now I've used this illustration. Some of you probably um, have, have heard me say this before. <laughs> you looked in the mirror today, yesterday, the day before, the day before, the day before, the day before. Now, in inches or centimeters, how long is your nose from right here to the tip? <laughs> You don't know? What do you mean you don't know? You've looked at that mug all your life. <laughs> you know why you don't know? You never decided to find out. 
if you ever get a tape and measure it, you will never forget it. <laughs> How wide is your face from this side of your, your eye to the other side of your eye? You never had any reason to know. Most people read the Bible with no reason to know. Close it and don't have any idea what to read. No idea. Because you never made a decision before God to put his word first place and act on what he reveals to you. And once you do, oh, it just begins to open up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now then, and the third one follows that along, of course, put the word first. Now we read Proverbs 4, 20 through 22 this morning. Let's turn over there and look at it quickly because this is the healing prescription. But at the same time, this is also the prescription for receiving anything. The very key to faith, the key to prayer. Don't be so quick to pray. Now, if you've got an emergency, pray, but don't start making up a bunch of words. Just switch over into tongues immediately. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> The word fight its own fight. It has the power within itself to bring itself to pass. You do not have to make it come to pass. You let it come to pass. Amen. Prayer does not make faith work. Faith makes prayer work. Now, when you get, when, when you Acquire the scriptures that cover the situation. Now you have the answer to the prayer. Yes. Amen. So pray the answer, not the problem. Right. Right. Amen. Yes. Whatsoever thing you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. If it's finances, well, then go look up finance scriptures. Glory to God is the, the blessing of the Lord. It maketh rich and he adds no sorrow to it. It gives God great pleasure. He takes great pleasure in the prospering of his servants. Takes great pleasure in prospering me. I wish, or the cross reverence says, I pray that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I got so thrilled at hearing your dad, Roger, and your mother talking about that verse of scripture. <laughs> Driving down the street, and, and Miss Evelyn said, Oral, stop the car. And she, he said, What? And she jumped out of the car and laid her Bible up on the top of the car and read that scripture. He said, Evelyn, that's not in the Bible. Third John 2. She said, yes, it is. <laughs> and showed it to him. Oh, my. And that's when it began. Now, I'll tell you another little story on his parents. <laughs> And for those of you that are listening and not seeing, uh, Richard Roberts is sitting on the front row with his beautiful daughter, Chloe. Amen. And uh, so I'm getting to tell his parents' story <laughs> long before he came along. Most people have the idea because of the fame of Oral Roberts in the healing ministry. But the healing revelation didn't come first. Now, it's been so far removed 
that you and I don't have any concept of the old Pentecostal way of life. Because an itinerant Pentecostal preacher wasn't expected to have a home. You just went from one meeting to the next. You didn't go home. Boy, that'll be the day. That was the day. And you just stayed in the deacon's home or somebody. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> and so, Miss Evelyn said, Oral. Now, they, he'd, already, he'd, already, he'd already become pastor in there in Eden by this time. <laughs> but she said, you get me a house or I'm going to take these kids. I'm going home. He said, you wouldn't do that. She said, you just try me. <laughs> so, the deacon board, see, this was a deacon possessed, uh, no, uh, yeah. <laughs> forgive me, Lord, I would not have said that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> nah, they don't need, you know, we don't need a parsonage. We can't afford a parsonage. And, so you just had to live with the deacons and somebody. And uh, so, and, and it, prayer meeting night. He said, I'll tell you what, uh, we're going to receive an offering right now. And, and we're, we're going we're, we're to have a parsonage in this church. In fact, I'm going to start this offering with my paycheck. $50 for the month. He got home. Told Miss Evelyn what he'd done. She said, Oral, you didn't do that. Yeah, he said, I did. <laughs> he said it was it was a cold winter night in Oklahoma, but he said, I'm telling you, it's colder than that in that bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> so he's in trouble either way, man. He's in trouble if he don't get a parsonage. Now he's put his whole month paying that offering. Four o'clock in the morning. And he went to the door. It was a man, the wealthiest farmer in that county. He said, Aura, I'm ashamed to say that I didn't put anything in that offering. But he said, I want to tell you something. He said, I'm about to lose my farm. He said, I've been playing the stock market. And he said, I need a miracle. Now he said, I went home and I dug this up. I had it buried and I, I, I dug it up. He said, I'm a farmer and I know if you're going to get a, get a harvest, you're going to have to plant a seed. That's where that revelation came from. Seed faith. And he handed him four $100 bills. And he said to me, he said, Ken, I'd never seen a $100 bill in my life. He said, I knew they existed. And he said, he walked in that bedroom and just fanned them out. <laughs> Praise God. And the rest is, as they say, is history. Glory to God. My son, attend to my words. What words? Whatever words cover your situation. Incline thine ear unto my saying, listen to those words. Attend to them. What does that mean? That means put that first. You know, down in Texas, we, say, we don't say attend, we tend I've got to tend to something. Yeah. So you tend to this first. Yeah. Someone stopped you on the street and said, Brother Copeland, let's, uh, I'd like to, no, I, I apologize, man, but I, I've got an appointment and I've, I've got to tend to that. I just have when we can talk later. It means I've put that, my, my obligation to that yeah. first. Yeah. My obligation to this book is first thing in my life. 
I said the first thing in my life. Well, Brother Colby, you mean your family is not the first thing in your life? No. No. No, God is the first thing in my life. Gloria Copeland loves Jesus more than she does me. I know it, and I wouldn't have it any other way. And I love Jesus more than I love her, and she knows it, and we wouldn't have it any other way. And that's the reason we'll be married 57 years the 13th of April and, and, and haven't had a fight yet. Now, I fought a lot, but she wouldn't fight back. <laughs> and the woman taught me how to love. Well, we've, never had a, we've never had a serious argument. <clears throat> and you men, I'll tell you what. Take the blame. Take it. I don't make any difference whose fault it is. Just take the blame. <laughs> you can do that. Just take the blame. And just end the thing. Right then. I love you, baby. And I apologize for this. Well, no, it wasn't your fault. Yeah, it was. Now, don't start arguing about that. <laughs> Let them not depart from your eyes. We've already talked about that. Meditate on it until you see yourself with it. See yourself alive, not dead. See yourself wealthy, not poor and just barely get along. See yourself according to the word. Amen. Keep them in the midst of your heart. How do you do that? You have to put it in your eyes, put it in your ears, put it in your mouth, say it with your mouth, put it in your heart, say it with your mouth, put it in your heart, say it with your mouth, meditate on it, talk about it, talk about it to God, talk about it with God. Talk about it with yourself. Glory to God. If you have a wife like I have, talk about it with her. If you don't, keep your mouth shut for a while. <laughs> well, I, you know, I know, I know how this crowd lives. Anyway, well, most of you. Didn't. No, no. Now, see there, I shot my mouth off and like tore up my car. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? They are alive. His words are life. The life to those that find them. Health, the Hebrew text says, medicine to all of their flesh. And those of you that, that saw uh, the, our video this morning of Lachey McKinney, and she was, had 30 days to live with cancer. And she said, I remember Gloria Copeland reading that scripture right there. And she said, take your medicine three times a day, and if things get worse, double the dose. And that's what she did. And 30 days went back to the doctor, and there was no cancer. Hallelujah. Now, verse 23, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues or the forces of life. Spiritual forces are in your spirit. So you protect your spirit at all costs. Yes. Now, yeah. obey the voice of your spirit. Train it. Listen to it. Let's look at uh, 1 Peter 3. First Peter 3, 4. Let it be the hidden man of the heart or the inner man, which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is a great prize. Listen in here. Begin listening here. <coughs> this goes back to meditating. Yes. Yes, sir. All these things work together, you see. <clears throat> You're meditating the Word. Well, just, just listen a while. You're not through praying until you listen. And just be quiet. 
I still do this. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the hidden parts of the belly. Now what's that talking about? God is a spirit and the entrance of His Word bringeth light to the inner man. That's where God speaks. Healing is a spiritual healing. It comes through your spirit to your body. And, and so many people look for some kind of treatment. And it's not an outward in, it's an inside out. Yes, sir. Amen. Before we were born again, we were outside in people. That's the way we were raised. Whatever we needed, somebody else had it, and we had to figure out how to get it. Yes, Amen. And you've only got about three ways to add to yourself. You can work hard for it, borrow it, or steal it. <laughs> well, <laughs> you can run off with the bad, knock off at least one of those. <laughs> Should knock off at least two of them. Now, working hard, that's fine. But when you got born again and the blessing of the Lord came to live inside you, God is not looking for you to earn your living. Yes. Now, I didn't say you don't work. Right. New Testament says if you don't work, you don't eat. That's right. But we're not working for a living. Right. Amen. I can prove it to you. In the book of Ephesians, let him that stole steal no more. Let him work with his hands in order to have to give to him that needs. The product of our giving should be our living. And that takes the limitations off of it. Amen. It's not based on your salary. This is really difficult for, for uh, uh, mo most people together. It really isn't based on your salary. Your salary should be your source of your seed. That's where your tithing comes from. Amen. And it's the source of your seed. I said one time, by the Spirit of God, it came out of my mouth before I had time to think about it. And I said, in the kingdom of God, a janitor can have a jet. And there was a woman <laughs> came up to me later. She said, I'd like to know what a janitor need with a jet. And I didn't know how to answer that. <laughs> but what do you do? You stop and search the belly. <laughs> search the inside. And, and it's just always helped me just put my hands up. Because this is where I concentrate my ears. Not here, but here. And I said, well, and I heard it just as plain. Depends on what he does on his weekends. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought about Charles Capps. Yes, sir. Charles in heaven today, and I miss him. But, and Charles and I flew together, and, and, uh, and I had a lot of, lot of fun preaching faith together. And... <laughs> <laughs> He's a farmer and got hold of the word of faith. Hallelujah. And he just kept preaching and it started out on just weekends and stuff, but it got to where he didn't have time to farm. Yes. Smith Wigglesworth was a plumber yes, sir. and got to where he didn't have time to plumb. Right. <laughs> He's too busy in the work of the ministry, but he always took his tools with him in case somebody might need help. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Now, this is what happened to me. I went from a pilot that thought about preaching to a pilot, to a preacher that flies. 
changed my yeah. paradigm, my way of thinking. Amen. So you can change that thinking before the outer man changes. Can you see that? So listen, listen, listen in here. That still, small voice. Since it is still, and since it is small, you have to shut up. He's talking all the time. And you give him an opportunity. And don't start off looking for whole paragraphs. Yes and no will be fine. The way I first started this, but I really had to make a commitment, and it was a whole lot harder than I thought it was going to be. And I promise God, I'm not going to get dressed anymore and make my own decisions. I'm going to ask you, should I wear this? Or should I wear this? Or should I wear this? This one, yes, sir. Or no, sir. I'm done in here. No. This one? And don't get in a hurry. And don't let it get involved in here. Get it down in here. Yeah. Yes. And you look at that. Oh no. <laughs> I am gonna look really bad over there today. That doesn't go together. I found out I've been looking bad all the time. <laughs> but I made a commitment. Just grin and put it on and wear it. Follow. Follow. Listen to that inner man and develop it and train your spirit to listen. Yeah. And, I've, and then in times I'd say, Lord, did I hear you right? That doesn't look like that'll go together. I told you to wear that. Yes, sir. I'm done. See, you don't know who's going to be there. It may be something, a kind of a squirrely looking combination to you, but there may be somebody there that really needed to see that. Amen. It gets rid of your self-consciousness. And you, get, you begin to exercise trust in Him so that when the serious stuff does come along and it doesn't look all that right to you, you just say, well, no, praise God, this is the way we're going. This is the way we're going. And I don't mind telling you, I've missed it. Uh, anybody in here that never missed it, can I see your hand? What was it Brother Hagin used to say? Uh, whoever's never missed it, we'll have an altar call now for liars. <laughs> I've missed it, sure I have. But over time, it develops. It develops and develops, and you come to that place where you're accurately hearing the voice of your own spirit. Amen. And it will develop to the place where you begin to hear His voice. And that can be quite exciting. Amen. Particularly when, it's, when He just grabs you and says, don't turn that way, turn that way. Well, don't sit there and argue about it. Turn the way you're supposed to go. You remember Roy Hicks. He was uh, uh, overseer of the Four Square Church for many years. He's in heaven now. He took, and he did a study and took a poll of people in his own church, that people that had had accidents or and other people that he had access to or to their family over the years. And, and he would just ask them, Did, uh, was there anything at all that uh, before this happened that maybe would have prevented it had you listened to it? He said, without fail, 
every one of them said yes. They had an inward witness. Or they had just, as you're playing out, heard the Lord say, don't do that. And did it anyway. And violated it. Don't ever violate that inward witness. I mean, if you have to just stand perfectly still and say, I'm not going. Keith Butler, our dear Bishop Butler in Detroit, years ago, in the airport, about to get on board an airplane, he got a check. So he turned around to whoever was with him and said, I, I don't, I'm not going. Well, why not? Well, I just got to check against it. I believe I'll just catch another flight. Oh, come on. No, no, I'm not going to do it. Well, I'm going to go ahead. And it happened. It happened. Cost that other fellow his life. Now, it may not cost someone's life. But at least you obeyed that inward witness. I'm talking about developing the born again human spirit and the voice of the spirit, the voice of your spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This save your life. Save your life. I've experienced it. Not as drastically as some that I know. But I can stand here and relate story after story after story after story that they just shouldn't have done it. Shouldn't have gone there. Knew better and did it anyway. All right. Now then, this last one, do what God says, do. Do it exactly as he said and do it now. I want you to look with me in the 12th chapter of Genesis and we'll close with this. Genesis 12. Verse 4. Well, let's read down to it. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from your father's house unto a land that I'll show you. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you. I'll make your name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. I'll bless them that bless thee, curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed. He didn't argue about it. He didn't say, I don't want to go. He just, he got them left. But he knew what to do. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about just jumping up and just going wild. No, no. You take the, all of these other elements and you take the time to get the plan. We were in uh, Oklahoma City. I was driving. And uh, now you can ask Richard when uh, his dad got in the car, whatever he had, in this case, it was his Bible. He sat down in that car over there. <laughs> and when he's in a meeting, he didn't talk to anybody, yeah. ever. And before, before meetings, he would, I have seen him sit at a, a, a separate table from Miss Evelyn to, to keep from being tempted to talk to her. Because he had locked into that, he's, he's in that place where he's, he's hearing the Lord and he didn't want to get it interrupted. And so it was very quiet in that car. And we were driving on the way to the venue. And he said, Kenneth! And man, when he said that, I would like to jump out of my skin. <laughs> he said, People will always tell you you can't do it. This is the reason you don't go shooting your mouth off and telling people what the Lord's telling you to do. He said you follow these three things and you'll always be successful. Number one, find out the will of God. 
Now, in that first step, that's when you search the Scripture. That's when you take time to meditate. That's when you listen to God and you keep your mouth shut about it. You don't go talk to other people. Yes. Well, I believe the Lord's telling me to go on daily television. Well, now, Brother Copeland, now, and people have, think, they, and they're, I think they're obligated to tell you all the reasons why you probably shouldn't do this. Come on, sir. Because we don't want to get your hopes up. That's the reason I'm not going to talk to you. Yes, sir. Amen. I want my hope up. Amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I don't need you or anybody else tearing it down. Amen. 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 Now, once you've taken care of step one and you have determined what the will of God is in this, Colossians 1 9, don't ever forget that. I desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So it's available. And then he said, number two, once you know what the will of God is, confer no longer with flesh and blood. Yes, sir. Amen. Don't be asking them what they think. Because you're going to get this thing done. Amen. Then step number three is get your job done at any cost. Well, I'm sitting there. One, I'm driving the car. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. I could hardly wait till I get someplace where I'm right this down. <laughs> and got to the meeting place and wrote it down and began to meditate on it. And 52 years have come and gone. And this is still what Gloria and I do. And it has stood strong in us all these years. Because once you know what the will of God is, amen, then you don't ever back off. And you don't ever let the devil talk you out of it. No, because a lot of people, and a lot of them well-meaning people, they just don't understand what the deal is. You say, well, nobody's ever done that. Well, I'm going to be number one. Amen. Now, I could go around asking people what they think about me living to be 120 years old. What do y'all think about that? <laughs> well, nobody's done that. Uh, 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 uh. But I didn't say anything about that. And it, there were several years went by there that I first heard it. I heard the first thing I heard about it, Gloria was read a footnote out of the classic amplified in the 90th Psalm. And I got interested in it and began to study it and began to meditate on that. And then over a period of time, the Lord began talking to me about it. And, and, and all of these things that, that I talked to you about tonight, all of these different um, uh, steps to this. Went through all of those, listening to it, talking about it. She and I talking about it. And um, I had heard Keith Moore talk about it and teach on it. And Keith had a lot of insight into it. Well, I, I could sit and visit with him about it because he built me up, see. But I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't talk to anybody about it. Now, I can talk to you about it, but I'm talking about people outside and all that. But man, yeah. you know, yeah. they look at you like you just crawled out from under a rock. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that's true. But once it got settled in me, right. and once it became a mandate, mm -hmm. now I don't care who knows. That's right. Amen. I'm going the whole route. Amen. Come on. But that had to build up. Hope had to get strong uh -huh. in it. And I'm, a, I'm in a whole lot better physical condition now than I was when I first took hold of it. Uh -huh. Praise God. Double up. Good. Can I share one other thing with you? Yes, sir. This happened to me. This was before I got a hold of that. When I turned 70, <laughs> I'll tell you a little something about what the Jews say. Um, three score and ten, seventy. 
or if by strength, four score. They say, well, okay, if 70 is the minimum. All right. 80, okay. So, when I'm 83, since 70 <laughs> was the end of it, when I'm 83, now I'm 13. Yeah. <laughs> I can bar mitzvah again. <laughs> they really do this, man. These people got a handle on it, brother. <laughs> thought, yeah, one more year and I'll be 13 years old. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I noticed my, my physical body and so forth when I turned 70 and then 71, I, I noticed uh, my, I, my DNA takes after my mother's family more than my, my dad's. And my dad's family were longer lived than my mother's family. My grandfather lived. Uh, he died at, at uh, 74. My mother died at 77. And my grandmother on that side died at 75. And I mean, this was pretty well a pattern of it. Well, I noticed my physical body going in the same direction. And I, you know, of course, I resisted it. I'm meditating on this. Here we go again. And I heard the Lord just as plain. This is when, and you've heard me say this, he said, Kenneth, you're, you're concerned with your natural DNA. Now, see, I've already outlived that whole family. But he said, get your mind over on your spiritual DNA. He said, you're born of me. <laughs> he said, you're born of incorruptible seed. So I began to meditate on that. And I could see it where I was going like this in the natural and began to get concerned about it. Here came the supernatural concept and just picked me up. And I knew it. I knew it as well as I knew my own name. I'm going to outlive that whole family. And, and then out of that came all of these other steps and other things. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If there is anyone in the sound of my voice that has never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you died right this minute, not real sure where you'd go. But you say, Brother Copeland, tonight's my night. Is there anyone in this congregation? If so, raise your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Now, for the sake of those that are watching online, you say, Brother Copeland, I'm not sure. Well, you can be sure, and you need to be sure. Let me ask you a question. It's a biblical question. Do you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead? Do you believe that? Oh, yes, Brother Copeland, I do. The scripture says in the 10th chapter of the book of Romans, if you will confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All of us together, let's lead them in that prayer. 
O God, God in heaven, I believe with all my heart. I believe with all my heart. You raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I repent of sin. I renounce the devil and everything he stands for. The past is dead and gone. You're my Lord now, and you're my future. Fill me, Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit now. I receive Him. And I receive by faith my supernatural prayer language, just like they did on the day of Pentecost. Now thank Him for it. Just raise your hand and just thank God for it. Thank Him for it. Thank Him for it. Thank him for it. Now, anyone that has any kind of symptoms with your heart, doesn't beat quite right, pain, angina, any kind of heart situation, any kind at all, raise your hand. All right, those that raise your hand, hold them up there. Now, if you have your hand up right now, get up out of that seat and get up here right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Could we move this podium, please? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I'm not going to touch you come on thank you Lord now listen to me carefully I'm not going to touch you until I'm ready to release my faith now when I touch you, my point of contact to release my faith is the name of Jesus. And when I touch you, I want you to say, that's it, I take it now. Let's rehearse. That's it, I take it now. One more time. That's it, I take it now. Now, don't add a bunch of stuff to it. <laughs> you can't after you say that. But these are instructions I heard from the Lord. Amen. A I said amen. amen. <clears throat> Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you. Scoot back just a tiny bit and give me some, a little bit of room, please. In the name of Jesus by the authority invested in me as a prophet of God and as a minister of the gospel I lay my hands on you to be healed and made whole in your heart in the name of Jesus. Oh, 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 glory. Oh, oh, oh. oh, sister, there it is. Glory to God. That, yeah, that's it. And that went in you like a shot. Thank you, Jesus. Did you say that? That's it. I take it now. <laughs> in the name. That's it. I take it now. That's it. I take it now. Yeah, glory to God. In the name of Jesus. That's it. I take it now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name In the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. I take it now. In the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. I take it now. Ah, oh, glory to God. This has been working on you all day long. It's just about, I don't mean on you, it's been working in you all day. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, that's it. I now take it now. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, glory to God. Glory to the Lord Jesus. Glory to the Lord Jesus. Glory to the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. That's it. I take it now. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. In the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yes. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. I felt your heart be calmed down right then underneath my hand. Did you feel that? It was just kind of pounding, but it, it, it quit. It just went peaceful. Amen. You're going to live a long time, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. You believe that? I do too. Amen. <clears throat> in the name, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, glory to God, glory to God. That's it, I take it now. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. Glory to God, that's it. In the name of Jesus, oh, 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 oh. Glory to God, hallelujah. That's it. In the name of Jesus. Miss <clears throat> <clears throat> Nancy, would you come help me, please? Praise God. That's it right there. Oh, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's it. I'll take that's it. it. Right now, glory to God. In the name of Jesus. That's it. I'll take it right now in Jesus' name. Yes, glory to God.
That's his power going into you right now. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, I'm taking now. Yes, amen. That's it. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. <clears throat> In the name of Jesus. That's it. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, glory to God. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Is this it? This is it. That's it. In Jesus' name. Praise you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Well, that went into her like a shot. Put your hand back on there again. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> That's it. I take it now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Come on, folks, give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. In the name of Jesus.
Now, there it is, son, right there. That's his power. That's his power. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. A new heart. A new heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh, glory to God. That's it. I take it now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's his power, sweetheart, right there. That's it. Glory to God. Glory to God. Healing every organ in your body. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes, sweet Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. That's it. I take it. Yes, I agree Hallelujah. with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Something going on in your stomach, too. That's healed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. In the name of Jesus. I take it. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Every artery washed, cleansed by the washing of the word and all plaque every 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 eh, 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 is gone in the name of Jesus thank you for it father thank you for it father in the name of Jesus yes I take it as my thank you yeah Glory to God. That's it right there. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Thank you. Now you fight the good fight of faith. Amen. This is the victory that overcometh the world. Yes. Even our faith. Nine thirty eight. You're healed. Glory, Glory to God. To God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Glory. In the name of Jesus. Pray in the Spirit, people. Pray in the Spirit.
That's it, right there. That's what we're looking for, right there. Right there. Right there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. You take your hands off of God's property, Satan. You have no partner lot in this. Out of her flesh. <laughs> there it is right there. Glory to God. That's what you're looking for. That's what you're looking for right there. Glory to God. 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 Power. Now just go ahead and yield to it and just let it just just soak in it. Just let her let her let her go on down the floor. Just let her go on down the floor. Somebody give the Lord praise and thanks. Him. <laughs> now, I'm not going to take a lot of time about doing it. But anybody in the room that desires to have hands laid on you tonight, get up and get up here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now scoot back just far enough to where I'll have room to walk down there because What's the best way to organize this? Let's um, have them split. Go, go, this, go back. Yeah. I would have to start here and then let it come around this way. Okay. 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 Start right yeah. here. As they pass by. Start right here. here. Yeah. Start right here. Is okay. everybody so else? Everybody else circle around. Circle around. Okay. Circle around. Okay. Everybody else circle You're around. You're going to turn and walk in a minute. Work your way around. And then. Now everybody up here, turn to your right. There you go, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord Jesus, as I touch these people, you said the believer. I lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I do these things in honor of your name and your glory. 
in the name of Jesus. 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 In the name. In the name. In the name. In the name. In the name of Jesus. Remember, that's it. I take it. That's it. In the name. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name. In the name. In the name. In that name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In that name, glory to God. In the name of Jesus. In that name. I didn't finish that word to you this morning. And I knew there was something else. And when I came in the building tonight, and when I looked at you, I heard the Lord say this. And it was in there this morning. I, I, I just didn't get it all out. The songs are inside you. And they're coming. They're coming. Amen. Amen. I don't know whether you've done writing in the past or not, but you're going to now, girl. Yes, sir. They're in there. And they're coming. Songs, you come out of her. You come out of her in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In that name. In the name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name. In the name. In the name. In that name. Receive your healing in that name. In that name, glory to God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name. In the name. In the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In that name. In that name. The name of Jesus. In the name. In the name of Jesus. In the name. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for the name, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the name. Thank you for that name. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name. In the name. Hallelujah. In that name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, in that name, thank you, Lord Jesus. Receive your healing in that name, in the name of Jesus. Glory, glory be to God. In that mighty name, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. In that name, glory to God. Hallelujah. In that name, the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In that name. In that name. Praise God for his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the name, the name of Jesus. In that name, receive your healing. In that name, be blessed and be healed. In that name, rejoice and be well. In that name, be healed. In that name, thank you, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
thank you for that name. Thank you for that name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Receive your healing. Be healed and be made whole in that name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, 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 receive your healing in the name of Jesus, in that name that's above every name, receive your healing. Be blessed and be well in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, receive your healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Receive your healing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Be healed in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, 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 hallelujah. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, glory. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord Jesus. Whoa, glory to God, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In that mighty name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, 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 hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus, receive your healing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, glory to God that's powerful. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, 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 in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, 
in the name of Jesus. In that name, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus, praise God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In that name. In that name, hallelujah. In that powerful, wonderful name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. 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 Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Oh, give him glory, people. Give him glory. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Thank you for it, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. 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 Glory to God. In the name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in that name, in that name, in that name, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. 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 Hey, buddy. In the name of Jesus. In the name. In that name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In that name that's above every name that's named. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name, in that mighty name, in the mighty name of Jesus, the name above every name that's named, hallelujah, hallelujah, in that name, the glorious name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing, receive your deliverance, in Jesus' name hallelujah receive it receive it in Jesus name hallelujah in the name of Jesus glory be to God in Jesus name hallelujah in the name in the name in that mighty name hallelujah in the name of Jesus glory to God in the name in the name of Jesus. In the name. In that name. In that name. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance and healing and be made well and whole. In that mighty glorious name of Jesus. The name above all names. The name. The name. 
the name. Sickness must bow its knee to that name. Sickness is a name and it bows its knee to the name of Jesus. Pain is a name and it bows its knee to the name of Jesus. Arthritis is a name and it bows its knee to the name of Jesus. Heart trouble is a name and it bows its knee to the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The name, that name that's above every name that's named. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That mighty name, that powerful name that's above every name that's named. Glory be to Jesus. That powerful name, that wonderful name, that name, glory to God, that name of Jesus, that name of Jesus, glory to God, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, that name that's above every name that's named, I said the name of Jesus, hallelujah, glory be to God, glory be to God, hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody shout amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Everybody say that's it. has been ministering to us all night, all day, last night. Let's minister to him for a few moments. Oh, Jesus, we love you. You never leave us. You never forsake us. You're always there and you're always for us. You're never against us. Thank you for healing us tonight. Thank you for your mighty name. Oh, we just praise you and, and we worship you and bless you tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being so good to us. Thank you, Lord. And I want to thank God for this church. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I, uh, <laughs> Nancy, I don't remember. It wasn't this building. I just came, I didn't come to preach. And Ed turned around to me and said, uh, Brother Coleman, do you have anything? And I said, uh, well, no. Except you know that Christ is not Jesus' last name. <laughs> That's where that started. Yes. Was that night? In Tulsa, 1987. Yeah, I was in Tulsa. Mm -hmm. I really never thought of that. And I preached on it ever since. <laughs> 
I don't know this. Every time I get in your, you folks' presence, something happens. And it happened again. And it'll happen again next year. And it'll happen again next year. And just as long as you'll have me back, it'll just keep happening. <laughs> His name is higher than any other. His name is Jesus. His name is Lord. 